Tomorrow all the things were gone I'd worked for all my life And I had to start again With just my children and my wife I thank my lucky stars To be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away From the lakes of Minnesota To the hills of Tennessee Across the plains of Texas From sea to shining sea From Detroit down to Houston And New York to L.A. Where there's pride in every American heart And it's time we stand and say Before we begin our service today for Gayo, I want to take a moment to thank each and every one of you for being here. Uh, you've taken the time, you've made the effort to be a part of our service, and in doing that, um, you uh, are showing honor and respect to a life that has come to its completion among us. Gail's life journey here on earth that connected with you over these past six plus decades has come to its completion here. I'm sure you've been sharing memories, maybe laughing, crying, all the things that go along with that, and now you're here to be part of the service. And I thank you and also welcome those who um, are sharing the service through our live streaming today. Let's take a moment now to invite God to be with us in our thinking, in our, our thoughts and heart as we go forward. We begin today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, our strong and living God, our God who walks with us in all the occasions and circumstances of life. O oh Lord, we call, call upon you to be with us now in these moments as we go ahead remembering Gail in the many ways that her life intersected with ours. Be with us now in Jesus' name, amen. And for our service, I selected two uh, readings from scripture, both of them very short, but I think very profound. The first one comes from the Old Testament part of the Bible, and it talks to us about the occasions, or what the Bible calls the seasons, of our life. And it reads this way, it's from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. There's a time to be born and a time to die. There's a time to plant and a time to harvest what is planted. There's a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, 
a time to mourn, and a time to dance. And along with that um, reading, I selected a very short but extremely powerful reading from the New Testament, from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, where we're assured of God's love in all of those occasions or seasons of our life. From John, chapter 3, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life, for God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord that we'll hear this afternoon. We're going to take a few moments now to hear one of the songs that Gail's family has selected for our service. <laughs>
I indicated at the beginning, we've come together here in this place at this time because Gail's life journey here on earth with us has come to its completion. And her life journey covered quite a bit of territory, as you know. It began a little over 64 years ago in Baltimore, Maryland, on an army base. But she went to school here in Midland, going through our school system here, even through high school. And during those years would be when Gail developed that personality that you knew as Gail, that sense of values that she had, the person that was Gail with you. From 1980 to 1986, she served in the United States Army. And during those years, she traveled around a little at the direction of Uncle Sam. She was blessed with her son, Jeremy. In 1993, she married Steve, and they enjoyed 30 years together. Gail loved her animals and her Harleys. She also loved gardening and created a flower bed with the, in the logo of the Red Wings. Yep. Yep. To go along with her love for sports. Um, after her years in the service, Gail worked at Johnson Flowers and Hamilton Bakery. And then the last six months, she went through the most difficult battle, her battle with cancer. And then last Tuesday, her life journey here on earth came to its completion. And a little later in our service, we're gonna hear a little more about her life journey. So, but today we come together sharing our memories um, in what I call kind of this formal way of saying goodbye. But we also come together to commend Gail into the loving arms of Almighty God. You know, it was less than two weeks ago we celebrated Christmas. And there's a lot of fun things we do at Christmas, a lot of good things we do at Christmas. Whether it's baking or decorating the house or yard, going to parties, um, exchanging gifts, all the wonderful things we do at Christmas. But at the heart and core of Christmas, the real meaning of Christmas that's behind all of our festivities is that birth of Jesus, the Son of God. Because God would not let death have the final word over us. And so about 2,000 years ago, give or take a few, he sent his son Jesus, born into the world then, to take upon himself our flesh and blood with all of our faults, with all of our failures, with all of our wrongs, with all of our shortcomings, and to do what you and I cannot do. He lived a perfect life in perfect harmony with God. <clears throat> and yet in a world that was no more God-friendly 2,000 years ago than ours is today, he was rejected, <clears throat> he suffered, he died, and he was buried. But three days later, God raised him to life again on a day or date that we celebrate as Easter. And God received his perfect life in our place for all of our wrongs, for all of our faults and failures and shortcomings. And he opened his eternal home to us. And so today, as we gather together and share memories of Gail, we also commend her into the eternal peace and joy of Almighty God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we're going to take a few moments now to hear the second song 
selected by Gail's family. I've got a big sister. She served in the army. She carries her scars with honor and pride. When the pain gets too much to handle, she lights one up and forces a smile. In her front yard, oh glory waves over a lovely flower garden. The weeding was easy in her younger years. She still gets it done, but feels it for days. She says, Brother, remember that I. In your darkest day I'll be right beside you Every morning Is a precious gift So be thankful You got life to live Cause it comes to an end Like we always knew It was a Tuesday in her 64th summer She learned she was sick and called me at home Hey, little brother, I've got to tell mom But I'm too scared to do it alone So we called together and we heard the phone ring When mama answered she said hello My sister said mama They say I've got cancer And then mama cried Soft and low Children remember That I love you Don't forget That God loves you too In your darkest day I'll be right beside you Every morning Is a precious gift So be thankful We've got life to live If I could trade The rest of my days I'd give them to you Yeah, weeds don't Flowers do Life is beautiful And torn We pray for the roses While wearing the thorns To make every day count Is all we can do So sister, remember I love you, don't forget That God loves you too In your darkest day We'll be right beside you Every morning Is a precious gift So be thankful We've got life to live Cause it comes to an end like we always knew Yeah, weeds don't die But flowers do Only God knows why We bloom only for a time Weeds don't Flowers
family members have put together a beautiful eulogy that I'm going to read now. Gail could not have had a more generous and loving heart. If you knew Gail, you knew that. Her pets, friends, and family completed her world. No amount of time or expense was spared as she gave her love to those that were a part of her world. Gail found so much joy in the home that she shared with her husband, Steve. From her beautiful spring flower beds, flowering shrubs and trees, to the hummingbirds and songbirds that benefited from her generous offerings, Gail loved to enjoy and share the colorful beauty of the landscape surrounding their home. Squirrels and deer visited all year long. Gail loved to share those photos and videos with us all. She has always been a free spirit. Now her spirit is free to enjoy the endless gardens that never require weeding or watering as she rests in his loving embrace. At Gail's home, Christ's birthday was celebrated with colorful lights, both indoors and out. She loved to fuss over her countertop Christmas villages. She had to get them just right, but she, could, she knew that he could see them also. Growing up in the 60s and 70s, Abby was our favorite aunt, and our cousins Rhonda, Junior, Jimmy, and Wendy became some of our best friends. Gail would recall laughs and stories from decades ago just to laugh and share them again. She loved to talk and visit with anyone and everyone. I believe that she once talked to a stranger for half an hour after they had dialed her number by mistake. She only, you only needed to visit Gail once or twice to become a real friend. Just the whisper of a necessity or desire from a loved one set Gail in motion to find a way to fulfill their deed and deliver a smile. She took so much joy in giving a smile to those around her. Her quick wit was indeed entertaining when least expected. She shared as many laughs as she did smiles. Gail found so much joy and pride in her son, Jeremy, daughter-in-law, Desira, and grandchildren, Destiny, Emily, and Andrew. She kept her family informed on their sporting events, how amazing they were and how much they meant to her. We have reminisced many times about Gail's first trip home from basic training. She had so many stories to tell. Having never participated in any school sports, you could only imagine the look on Dad's face after teasingly asking if she did girl push-ups in basic training. And Gail promptly dropped down on the kitchen floor and ripped off 50 straight back push-ups without a grimace or hesitation. She popped back up on her feet and said, 50's nothing, with a laugh and a smile. She had become a badass American soldier. Gail loved this country and was so proud of her years in the military. Gail also had a very serious side. She worried about the direction in which America is heading and drafted many well thought out posts that she shared on Facebook and texts to friends and family. When she made up her mind about something, there was very little that could change it. Days after we learned of her diagnosis, we made plans to gather for her 64th birthday, August 27. She was so appreciative that her family rallied to her side from near and far. She was overcome with the love that poured out upon her. She found strength and hope from those that surrounded her and continued to share their prayers, love, 
and support. We heard her say, I always knew that my family loved me and I feel it so very much. When the doctor met with the family just a few days ago and explained that they had no treatment options left, we walked back to Gail's hospital room. Gail asked, why are you all so sad? The doctor thoroughly informed Gail with compassion that they had nothing to offer her and could only help her be as comfortable as they could. Gail's response, she sat up in bed, gave the doctor a great big Gail hug and proceeded to tell her, you're an awesome doctor. Thank you so much for what you have done for me. You are amazing. As Gail felt the doctor's despair, she selflessly acted to lift her up. The doctor had tears in her eyes when she said, Gail, I've never met anyone like you. Gail smiled and said, and you won't ever again, <laughs> and gave her one more giant Gail hug. That was Gail. She could make you laugh or smile and feel any better at all, and she found a way to make it happen. She gave it all to do just that. Her entire life, she was completely authentic and unapologetic, 100% Gail. We've lost an incredible force of positivity in our lives and gained an ally in heaven, an American soldier badass angel who is no doubt already telling everyone there how amazing we all are and how much love we will bring with us when our time comes. We miss you so much, Gail, but we will see you again. Very well. At this time, I'd like to ask if there are any of you here who would like to add a comment or so. Then let us bow our heads in prayer. As we gather together here, dear Lord, we remember with sadness our loss of Gail, but that's your gain in heaven. Amidst our sorrow at having to say goodbye, we want to also, though, thank you for giving her to us to know and to love and to be a partner in our life journeys here on earth. We thank you for the many great memories that we have of her life shared with us and of the events that made her Gail. As we go forward now with our own lives, we ask that you would walk with us and hold us in every circumstance <coughs> In our times of joy, be with us and present. And in our times of sorrow and need, we ask that you would lift us up. All of these things we ask in the precious name of the babe of Bethlehem, your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I would invite you to join with me in praying the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This concludes this part of our service today. We'll now turn our service over to our military for their honors. 
And before we go ahead and do that, I just want to remind you that there is food downstairs in our, in our uh, lunchroom after the service if you would like to share there uh, with each other. Thank <laughs> you. 